Good morning, folks. We're over here at spaceweathernews.com, and we're going to do another live-style episode so we can get a bit more detail about what goes into the morning news. So really quickly, we're going to come down, scroll, and we're going to be looking at the last 24, 48 hours of our star over in 193 angstroms. Uh, this is the STO AIA-193, and it does a really good job showing us the dark coronal holes, the bright umbral magnetic fields above sunspot regions, and as you can see, it probably does a pretty good job of showing you just about every filament pop, snap, surge, anything that happens. Now, that filament right there that just lifted off, uh, really not much of a chance for that to hit Earth. Uh, although, we're going to scroll down here and take a look at something they call the Enlil Spiral. So the way this works, the center is supposed to be the Sun and this little yellow dot is supposed to be the earth and this wave that comes out you can really more easily see it here going north on a profile view uh, this is actually uh, supposed to be the coronal mass ejection from that filament releasing and although it was released basically as it was facing earth it did release mostly north and uh, what this frame over here does is this pretends it's looking right behind earth uh, with one being north uh, to the right being south, not sure why they've done it this way, but you can see when that hits mostly right there, it's going to miss Earth slightly uh, to the north, although we could actually take a glancing blow from that according to NASA's annual spiral. I happen to disagree. I was looking on the satellites. There is nothing coming at us. But before I can scroll up too far, you should be able to see that, oh boy, we are in some geomagnetic storm conditions. Uh, it was pretty clear once I saw this spike yesterday and I was sending out those uh, observers alerts through the disaster prediction app even before uh, the geomagnetic storm began it was very clear that once we saw how high that spike that this geomagnetic storm was going to be uh, persistent and lasting for a little while uh, the real culprit here we're looking at the solar wind uh, this was the initial uh, impact we got from the coronal hole stream uh, and then dip back down just a little bit but now we are coming up and we are tagging 750 kilometers per second with really not much change in the density so that really indicates that there is a significantly higher amount of intensity to the solar wind it's basically the same amount of density just coming a lot quicker and here in the phi angle you can see that there's really no consistency to the way it's coming as well the polar angle of all the different particles in the plasma stream of the solar wind really are kind of pointed in all different directions and so uh, we are taking uh, the coronal hole stream as at this time a uh, pretty significant geomagnetic storm uh, no question about it uh, the amount of internet outages and power outages worldwide yesterday not just San Francisco for those who live there not just New York uh, not just uh, in Albuquerque for those who were having internet struggles like myself. Pretty much all across the world they were seeing uh, numerous electrical disruptions and that goes for electrical uh, fires, transformer events, uh, and the like. Uh, definitely related to this solar storm event. Uh, real quick, coming back and taking a look at some of these sunspots. Uh, even though we do have them creeping onto the disk, they're really not too scary at the moment. The northern grouping uh, really south in the primary cores and then the only positivity is up in those umbras up there and they're really separated not interacting too much uh, up next we're gonna come and we're gonna take a look at the incomer it is not super easy to see although it does appear that the trailing half uh, of that split is negative which would be interesting uh, as we zoom in here and try to see uh, that sunspot is kind of split in half and it does indeed look like it could be half positive half negative although it certainly isn't firing away as if that is the case uh, speaking of firing away or not firing away we're going to quickly take a look at the last 48 hours and 304 angstroms uh, we're going to wait for this to reset just so we can there we go uh, watch all of the pops and the snaps and that's the filament right there that releases and then compare that to the last 24 hours that we're watching right now much much more calm just uh, really the sun has seems like it got most of its energy out there and then after that just sort of stopped uh, just to reiterate the CME is not going to hit Earth uh, NASA thinks it could have a glancing blow 
I think that's probably unlikely. Uh, let's come and take a look at two really interesting stories about as quick as we can here. Uh, this is a fantastic article about uh, understanding the risks uh, from radiation for airline passengers from solar energetic particles, galactic cosmic rays. Uh, the full article and some nice little imagery is, is available there. But the second link you guys are going to have there today, um, this is something that is a bit more concerning, and I hope there was some sort of typo or some sort of error that even the American Geophysical Union didn't catch, because uh, what they are expecting when we enter this next sunspot minimum here in the coming years, let's just call it 2020, uh, they're saying that cosmic rays are going to be about 19 times higher than in the last cycle. And uh, we're basically used to seeing a percentage or two change from cycle to cycle. That number is way too high, and uh, let's just say I hope not. Uh, let's quickly come over to the wind map, windytv.com. Uh, we're going to go over the United States weather, and hopefully you'll be able to tell how you do this uh, the rest of the way. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to keep it on pressure here because pressure is where we start. I can tell that I'm going to be looking at this area here because we can see sort of air converging on that area, low pressure, and we have a low pressure cell off the northwest there, and I'm sure that's driving some moisture at the coast. So let's go ahead and pull up the rain and snow, and oh boy, yeah, that looks like it's flood potential there where the air is converging, and it's looking like we're going to have a, a little bit there as well. Now, it might be off of your screen, but down at the bottom, um, you can see the times rolling. There's an actual uh, play button you can click. Uh, you can actually click around too. So you can see I'll put this thing all the way out here. Uh, Monday, I can go to Wednesday. Um, you can just basically click around. But what we're going to do is come back and focus on today, of course. And it is looking like throughout the day today, that system is just going to slowly drag towards the east, uh, towards Washington, D.C., uh, really be a soaker and I actually didn't see uh, too much other than light rainfall coming uh, out to the northwest there so anyway that's uh, that's pretty much where we stand right now uh, this is the big story at this time uh, electrical disruptions could continue for up to 48 hours let's have our eyes on all of it folks eyes open no fear be safe everyone